So learn from Peter how to preach, how not to preach. So what does he do? He starts with things they hold in common, what they both can agree upon. Jesus is a man that did miracles in front of you that God did through him, which you saw. You can't deny. You see what he's doing? You see what he's doing? Pay attention. That's number one. So let's start with what we're, we can agree. You can't deny it. He's a man and did miracles that you saw showing God worked through him. And then he's going to build his way up to Jesus being God. Are you ready? You want to see how beautifully, masterfully, wonderfully, because he's filled the Holy Spirit, he then works from what they agree to now showing them he's God, which they can't deny. You ready for it? Acts 2, 23, all the way to 28. Acts 2, 23 to 28. Watch here. Let's unpack this slowly. Now watch how he's going to build his case to Jesus being God. Him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands, have crucified up fine and put to death. You see, they can't deny that either. They instigated his death. Whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. Well, that part they didn't see. So how's he going to prove? How's Peter going to prove God raised him back from the dead? Watch how he's going to prove it. For David says concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is at my right hand, that I not, may not be shaken, that I may not be shaken. Therefore, my heart rejoiced and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh also will rest in hope, for you will not leave my soul in Hades, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of joy in your presence. Now, guys, you really got to pay attention. Peter just quoted David's Psalm 16, 8 to 11, where David said God would not abandon his Holy One to Hades, Sheol, and will not allow him to see corruption. But David had been dead for a thousand years when Peter said this, and his tomb was among them. Watch what he's going to do here. Acts 2, 29 to 32. Acts 2, 29 to 32. Watch here. Men and brethren, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath, to him that of the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he would raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. He, foreseeing this, spoke concerning the resurrection of the Christ, that his soul was not left in Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God has raised up, of which we are all witnesses. So that they couldn't verify. The apostles saw Jesus alive and were witnesses. Now watch this. Acts 2, 37, their reaction. Acts 2, 37, their reaction. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, pierced. That's the Holy Spirit convicting them. And said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Now, first question you should ask, why did they believe Peter when Peter said, God raised Jesus in fulfillment of David's prophecy? He said, look, David's tomb is still here. But we know he's not a false prophet and he cannot lie. And he wrote scripture. But in his prophecy said God's holy one would not see decay nor soul be abandoned to Hades. But David died. He's been dead for a thousand years. His tomb is with us. He saw decay. So who was David talking about? The Christ, the Messiah, whom we all know will be a physical descendant of David. And that Christ is Jesus. How do we know? Because God raised his flesh making him immortal, and we saw him alive. Now, why would they believe it? They didn't see the resurrection. All they knew, the disciples were lying. Why did they believe it? Now, let me explain to you why they believed it. Are you ready? Why were they cut at the heart and could not deny 
that the apostles saw Jesus alive in the flesh. Let me show you. Are you ready? Acts 2, verses 1 of 4. Let me show you. Pay attention. You'll get your answer. Acts 2, verse 1 of 4. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven and a rushing. So they heard an audible sound, rushing wind, mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues. So they saw visible tongues of fire settling on top of each of them. And right? Rushing wind and filled the whole house. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of a fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Side note. Notice the Holy Spirit was heard audibly as wind, and the Holy Spirit manifested in 120 tongues of fire. When they saw the tongues of fire, that was the visible manifestation of the Holy Spirit appearing to them in visible shape, filling them. You caught it? So, can and does the Holy Spirit appear visibly? Yes. He appeared in tongues of fire on each one of them as a sign to those seeing it. I have now arrived because you heard me coming like wind. And now you see me manifest and I'm going to fill you to speak in different languages. So the Holy Spirit appears visibly and can be heard, heard audibly. You catching it? Now, folks, who did the Holy Spirit feel, fill? Notice who the Holy Spirit did not fill. He did not fill the Pharisees and their disciples. He did not fill the Sadducees and their disciples. He did not fill the Essenes. He did not fill the disciples of John the Baptist. He filled the disciples of Jesus, who just 40 days earlier was killed as a criminal in 5 to 14. Watch how God will blow your minds away. Watch. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. Watch here now. Pay attention. And when this sound occurred, the multitude got, came together. So even the multitude heard the sound of the Spirit coming. And they rushed to where the sound came and went to. Watch. And were confused because everyone heard them, the followers of Jesus, not them, but the followers of Jesus, they heard each one speaking in his own native dialect. Everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? They speak the Galilean dialect. And how is it? How is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? He speaks a Galilean dialect, but I speak a Judean dialect, and he speaks a Babylonian dialect, and they're all speaking, and I'm hearing them in my own unique dialect. You're hearing them in your dialect, and they're speaking it perfectly better than us. How? Now watch here. Verse 9. Parthians and Medes and Elamites, and that's Persia, by the way, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, is in Africa, I believe, Pontus and Asia. Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, that's Africa. Parts of Libya, Africa, and joining Cyrene. Visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans from Crete. And Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. <clears throat> 12 to 15. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? Others mocking said they are full of wine. 14 and 15, brother. <coughs> Lord Jesus, thanks in my lungs and my chest, my throat. <coughs> Notice now I'm getting. But Peter, standing up with the 11, raised his voice, said to the men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. It's nine in the morning, dude. We're not alcoholics. It's nine in the morning. So then what is this, Peter? What is this that we're seeing and hearing? We're hearing it. 
And we're seeing it. We can't deny it. We're seeing a miracle in front of our eyes. What is this, Peter? Watch. Not, watch what Peter does. Acts 2, 16 and 21. Watch here. Acts 2, 16 to 21. And it shall come to... Oh, I'm sorry. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Notice what Peter said. What you're seeing us do is fulfilling the prophecy of Joel. Notice the prophecy. Okay. And But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God. Now notice who pours out the spirit. Guys, if you're not paying attention, you're going to miss everything. <clears throat> In the last day, says God, that I, I, God, will pour out of my spirit and all flesh, your sons, your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams, and on my men servants and on my maid servants, I, God is speaking, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, signs like speaking in tongues on the earth, right? And fire and vapor. Of smoke, and they saw tongues of fire, right? They saw tongues of fire. The sun shall be turned in darkness, which is what happened with Jesus when he was on the cross 40 days earlier. It turned dark, right? It happened to Jesus on the cross, right? <clears throat> sun shall be turned in darkness, and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Now, watch this. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, notice what Peter did. Peter said, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. And here's the miracle. The Holy Spirit is filling us. We're speaking miraculously in all the different dialects miraculously. And you know that's not humanly possible for us to do. And this filling of the Holy Spirit is fulfilling the prophecy. But notice what the prophecy said. God, not a creature, God in heaven would pour out his spirit on his servants. And then if you call on the name of the Lord Jehovah, you'll be saved. Folks, can I ask you a question? If Jesus is a false Messiah whom God condemned, why did God pour out his spirit on the disciples of Jesus when the prophecy says God is going to pour out his servant on his male and female slaves, not on his enemies? So why did he pour out the spirit on Jesus' servants if Jesus is a fake? Did you catch it now, what Peter is doing? He's using this to prove if Jesus was a fake and God condemned him, then the last people on earth that would be filled with the Holy Spirit is his followers. But we are the only ones, not you who rejected him, we and not you, we're filled with the Holy Spirit, fulfilling Joel, showing that we, the disciples of Jesus, are the true servants of the living God. You see what he did? That's why they couldn't deny it. That's why in Acts 2.37, they were cut to the heart. Man, we're seeing the miracle of them speaking in tongues. We can't deny it. And if Jesus was a fake, God would not honor his servants, his disciples, by filling them with the Spirit. That means God did raise him alive. That means Jesus did fulfill what David said, that God's Holy One, his flesh would not corrupt. So God raised this Jesus, whom we instigated, his death. God has now raised him alive in the flesh, and he's in heaven. Now, how does this prove that Jesus is Jehovah God? How does now Peter use this to prove Jesus is Jehovah God? You ready? According to the prophecy of Joel in Acts 2, 16 to 18, 7 to 18, who pours out the Holy Spirit? God, right? I, God, will pour out my spirit. Whose name are you supposed to call on in Acts 2, 21 to be saved? The name of the Lord, Jehovah. Let's post it again. Acts 2, 17, 18, and verse 21. Acts 2, 17, 18, and verse 21. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. 
Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So notice, guys, two things. In heaven, not a creature pours out his Holy Spirit on his servants. And you are to call on the name of the Lord, which in Hebrew is Jehovah, to be saved, right? Whose name? The Lord's name, Jehovah. Who pours out his spirit? God, not a creature. Okay, now watch this. Acts 2, 32 to 33. Let's see if you're going to catch it. Acts 2, 32 to 33. Watch here. This Jesus, God has raised up, of which we are all witnesses. Now notice 33. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God, and having, Jesus, having received from the Father, Jesus received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, He, Jesus, poured out this which you now see and hear. Wow, Peter, what did you just do? Wow, Peter. What did you just say? <whistles> Peter, you just quoted Joel where Joel said, God would pour out the Holy Spirit upon his servants. But you said, Jesus is the one who took the Spirit from the Father, and Jesus in heaven poured out the Spirit on you, his followers. What are you telling me about Jesus? I'm telling you, Jesus is one with the Father, so the Father and the Son are the God of Joel who poured out the...